12 Strange Uncommon Conditions. Before we dive right into this video, let's take a quick look at one of our viewers' comments. Gamer Greenland 77 had this to say. Cool channel you got going here. Thanks for commenting, Gamer Greenland 77 And now back to our video. Number 12, Jumping Frenchman of Main Disorder. This bizarre and rare disorder was first described all the way back in the late 1800s in French Canada, when a bunch of French Canadian lumberjacks were all struck by it. There is no known cause for this disease, but it's believed that cultural factors play a part in creating an extreme conditioned response. Basically, they were all experiencing uncontrollable jumping and an over-exaggerated startle reflex. Number 11, Cronkite Canada Syndrome. This very rare syndrome is notably recognized by the several polyps that are located inside of the digestive tract. These polyps can be located everywhere from your small intestine to your esophagus, which is actually the least common. Individuals suffer from nail growth issues and losing their hair, while also losing their sense of taste. Of the individuals who suffer from this, two-thirds of them happen to be of Chinese descent, and it tends to affect males more than females. What causes this is completely unknown, and it can be treated with medications, such as prednisone, and chromalin sodium. Number 10, Wolman disease. Scientifically referred to as lysosomal acid lipase deficiency. Wolman's disease is a genetic disease that occurs when two parents carry the autosomal recessive trait and pass it down to their child. This then causes the body to produce an insufficient amount of active lysosomal acid lipase enzyme. This enzyme is what helps the body break down fatty substances inside of it. Patients with this deficiency suffer from the fatty materials building up inside of their liver, spleen, and other organs. Recently, an enzyme replacement therapy was approved back in 2015 to help patients who suffer from this, and the therapy was also approved in Japan this year. Number nine, adult onset stills disease. AOSD, as it's abbreviated, is classified as a rare type of systemic inflammatory disease that is characterized by an elevated fever, a bumpy rash, and joint pain. Because the symptoms are also found in other inflammatory and autoimmune diseases, those first have to be ruled out before making a proper diagnosis. The cause of the disease is unknown, but it's believed to have something to do with interleukin-1, which is a group of 11 cytokines that help regulate immune and inflammatory responses caused by infections. It isn't life-threatening. However, strong flare-ups that affect the heart, lungs, and kidneys can pose a severe risk of a possible fatality. It can be treated with the steroid prednisone. Number eight, Haley-Haley syndrome. This genetic disorder was first described back in 1939 by two brothers named Hugh Edward and William Howard Haley, hence the name. The disease is recognizable by the blisters and rashes that it causes to develop on the skin, mostly around folds of skin. These breakouts can be quite painful and could potentially become raw and infected. Sometimes, new blisters will form on the still raw skin that is still healing, which can seem like a never-ending cycle. By using a weak corticosteroid, patients can help treat outbreaks, and some people have even had good results with laser resurfacing. Number seven, Rabson-Mendenhall syndrome. Rabson-Mendenhall syndrome is classified as a rare type of autosomal recessive disorder that causes the individual to have a severe insulin resistance. This is due to a mutation that occurs in the patient's insulin receptor gene. Unaffected parents who are both carriers of the autosomal recessive trait have a one in four chance of passing the disorder onto their offspring. Patients are known to have skin abnormalities along with abnormal growths on their head, nails, and face. Treatments include trying to control the blood glucose levels with insulin and a strict diet that is planned. However, the life expectancy for someone diagnosed with this disorder is only around one to two years. Number six, lesch nyhan syndrome. This happens to be a rare disorder that is inherited and is caused by the lack of an enzyme in the body known as HGPRT, and it is known to affect around one in 380,000 live births. The disorder is X-linked recessive and is often passed down from the mother to her son, as this tends to generally affect boys. However, there are a few female cases in the world that are quite rare. It causes a build of uric acid in the body, but can be treated with allopurinol to help reduce the high levels. Symptoms include moderate intellectual disability, and individuals have poor muscle control. The most significant feature is that individuals tend to self-mutilate with lip and finger biting, and are prone to head banging. Even though there's no cure, these people can live well into adulthood. Number five, Williams syndrome. 
The following image is one that you can find on the williamssyndrome.org website, where individuals can go to get more information and learn just what exactly Williams syndrome is. It's actually a rare type of neurodevelopmental disorder that's found in 1 to 75,000 to 1 in 20,000 births. The reason that this occurs is because of deletion of approximately 26 genes located on the long arm of chromosome 7. Characteristics include the individual having an elfin looking face, a very sociable personality with everyone, including strangers, and a low and flattened nasal bridge. There's currently no cure, but there are several treatments and organizations to help cope with the symptoms. Number four, Dandy Walker syndrome. This syndrome is actually comprised of a set of congenital brain malformations that occur during the embryonic development and affects the cerebellum along with the fourth ventricle. They are categorized in three different subtypes, but all of them affect the cerebellum, which is responsible for the body's muscle coordination. Because the fourth ventricle is also affected, there can be a buildup of cerebrospinal fluid in and around the brain, which will then cause intracranial pressure to occur that will require a special tube called a shunt to help reduce the pressure. There's no cure, but there are treatments available to help with the associated problems. Number three, Cadacil. Cadacil is the abbreviation for the genetic disorder known as cerebral autosomal dominant arteriopathy with subcortical infarcts, Luke Owen cephalopathy. Try saying that five times fast. This is the most common type of hereditary stroke disorder and is categorized by the onset of migraines, mood disorders, and strokes. Usually, the individual will begin to experience these signs between the ages of 35 to 55 years of age. Eventually, the disease will progress to subcortical dementia, along with the inability to control the facial muscles and urine leakage. There is no specific treatment available, though patients are given antiplatelet medicines such as aspirin to slow down the disease and keep strokes at bay. Number 2. Peri-Romberg Syndrome Also called progressive hemifacial atrophy, this disease is rare and causes the tissue underneath the skin of the patient's face to shrink and degenerate, but it can also occur elsewhere on the body. This causes the face to acquire a non-symmetrical form. It mostly occurs in girls between the ages of 5 and 15 years of age, but there have been cases with male patients. There are surgical and medical forms of treatment that include a variety of immunosuppressive drugs. The exact cause still remains unknown, and it seems to just happen randomly. Before we reveal number one, let us know in the comments below something new that you learned, and don't forget to subscribe. And now, number one, necrotizing fasciitis, otherwise known as streptococcal gangrene, or flesh-eating bacteria. The severe bacterial infection is capable of spreading throughout the body at an alarmingly rapid rate. What happens is that the bacteria enters your body through a break in your skin. It can either be a burn or a cut. Once inside, the bacteria will then begin to release toxins that will start to completely destroy the soft tissue in your body. Treatments are available, but you must act quickly because if left untreated, there's a 73% mortality rate. In severe cases where it is too late for antibiotics, amputation of the infected limb will be required in order to ensure survival.